Hello, my lovelies. It's Susanna, and today I want to show you how to simplify square roots. We go through these three examples together, so let's start with the first one. We want to simplify the square root of 12. The problem is that the 12 itself is not a square number. Square numbers are numbers like 1 squared, which equals 1, or 2 squared, which equals 4, or 3 squared, which equals 9, and so on. So these numbers here are square numbers. The 12 itself is not. So it's not so easy to calculate the square root of 12, but there is a process how you can simplify this expression here, and I want to show you how to do it. We want to write the 12 as a product of two numbers. So, for example, the 12 can be written as 4 times 3, right? There are other products, so 2 times 6, for example, as well, but this product here is a good choice because here is a square number in this product. And we always want to find square numbers in these numbers here because we can calculate the square root of a square number pretty easily. And this is what we want to do. So we have a product now in our square root. We are always allowed to write this one big square root then as two separate square roots, which are multiplied as well. In the first square root, I write the first part of this product, the 4, and in the second square root, I write the second part of the product, the 3. And now I have two separate square roots and I can calculate them if it's possible. So the square root of 4 is perfect because the square root of 4 just equals 2. So instead of the square root, I write a 2. And the square root of 3, I cannot simply calculate this, so I just leave it as it is, and this is my result. Okay, let's take a look at the second example. Same thing here. The 48 itself is not a square number. But we try and find square numbers that are part of the 48. So I can write the 48 as 4 times 12, for example, right? And here, ta-da, I have a square number that is part of the 48. But always check your second number here as well, if you can find even more square numbers in here. So, we already found this green 4 here, which is great. But now, we write the 12 as a product again, because we just saw that we can write the 12 as 4 times 3 and have another square number in here. So, try to find as many square numbers as possible. The 3 itself, there is no square number in there anymore. So this is all we can do. But now we can write this one big square root as three separate square roots that are all multiplied by each other. It's important you are only allowed to do this if you only have multiplications here in your square root. But in the first square root, we have a 4. In the second, we have a 4. In the third, we have a 3. And now we can calculate these square roots. The square root of 4 just equals 2. The square root of 4 just equals 2. And the square root of 3, we have to leave it as it is. Okay, now you can multiply these two numbers here. So 2 times 2 just equals 4. And you have the square root of 3 at the end. Just to make it a little faster, you don't always have to write this step here to separate your square roots. You can also go from this step to this step here. So we can leave out this step here in the middle. If you see that you have your square numbers in your square root, you can just calculate the square root of 4, which gives you 2, 
the square root of 4, which gives you 2, and you leave your 3 in your square root. Okay, last example here. Same thing, we have a large number this time, but we use the same steps. We try to write this number here as a product of two other numbers. So there are different possibilities for that, but for example, we have a zero at the end of our number, which tells us that this number here is divisible by 10. So we can write it as 10 times, and then only the first three digits, so 10 times 405. Now, we do the same thing with our new numbers. So we try to find a product that gives us 10. For example, 2 times 5 equals 10. And the same with our second number here. We try to write this as a product as well. Um, we have a 5 at the end of our number, so we know this number is divisible by 5, so we can write it as 5 times something. How often do we have the 5 in this number? Uh, so we want to divide 405 by 5. We could split this number into 400 first and divide this by 5, and then the rest, just the 5 divided by 5. 400 over 5 equals 80, 5 over 5 equals 1, so in total we have 81, so 5 times 81 equals 405. Okay, let's take a look at our numbers here. We have a square number in here, which is great. The 2 itself is not a square number, but we also know that there are no other square numbers in there, so the 2 will stay in here. The 5 itself is not a square number as well, but we have another 5 in here. So as soon as numbers repeat, this is great, because 5 times 5 gives you a square number. 5 times 5 equals 25, so we have a square number in here, and then the 81 is a square number already. So let's write this one big square root as three separate smaller square roots that are all multiplied by each other. Here we have the square root of 2, then the 25 in here, then the 81 in here, and then we can calculate this. The square root of 2 has to stay like this, but the square root of 25 equals 5, and the square root of 81 equals 9. We can multiply these two numbers now. 5 times 9 equals 45. This is our result, but I personally prefer to switch these two. So I prefer to have the number in front of my square root. So I would write this here as 45, so first the number, and then I multiply it by the square root by the square root of 2. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I wish you a wonderful day, and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!